your toilet flush plays a role in the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, a lot of attention has been given to our mouths, but there is another hole in your body that sheds virus. That's right, I'm talking about your backside. There's no mask for what comes out of here, and you might be overlooking just how important poop is to the COVID-19 pandemic. In this episode of Real Science Explained, we're talking about poop. Using science, I'll tell you the surprising way poop may be one of the ways the virus is being transmitted and how wastewater can serve as an early warning sign to outbreaks. So here we go. Before we get started, though, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. And stick around to the end. I'll show you a picture of me going down in the sewers. Like the children's book says, everyone poops. And everyone's poop is full of pathogens, things like bacteria, parasite eggs, and viruses. The fact that our poop makes us sick is nothing new. In 1854 London, an outbreak occurred of cholera, a disease now known to be caused by a bacteria, but at that time was thought to be caused by bad air. John Snow, uh, no, not that one. Uh, yes, the one who was credited with kickstarting modern epidemiology, painstakingly mapped out cases and identified the source as coming from the Broad Street Pump, a communal water source. The reason the Broad Street Pump was making everyone sick, it turns out, was because a mom was washing her baby's dirty diapers down the drain, and that contaminated water was leaking through a faulty cesspit into the Broad Street well. Poop water, yuck. So for some pathogens like the Vibrio bacteria that causes cholera or enteroviruses that infect the GI, the fecal transmission route is central to the existence of those diseases. For other diseases though, poop is really not part of their game plan. So what about the coronavirus? The first question we have to ask is, is SARS-CoV-2 detected in human feces? One meta-analysis that pulled data from 11 studies found that about half of stools sampled from patients had detectable viral RNA in it. The next question we have to ask then is, is the virus detected in stool samples viable? In other words, can it go on to infect another host? Or is it just viral bits? We have to consider the origin of the virus being detected in the poop. In general, viruses detected in feces can derive from three possible sources. Swallowing respiratory secretions from the respiratory tract, the residue of infected immune cells, or virus replication in intestinal cells. If it's the first two, then the detected virus is just fragments and not viable. It's just waste passing through the GI system. If it's the third, though, it's an enteric virus. Fecally transmitted viruses, such as enteroviruses, replicate in the GI system and then shed viable virus through the feces. So what about SARS-CoV-2? Is the virus enteric? The coronavirus uses the ACE2 receptor to infiltrate our cells. And these ACE2 receptors are present not only in the respiratory epithelium, but also in the gastroenteric mucus. And gastrointestinal symptoms are one of the many clinical manifestations of this disease. About 1 in 5 patients reported gastrointestinal symptoms, according to one meta-analysis. So, it's plausible that the novel coronavirus can infect the GI system and shed viable virus. But do we have any proof? Yes. At least one study was able to isolate virus that was collected from stool samples, inoculate that virus into human cells, and then observe those cells reproducing, meaning they were likely infectious. So if viable SARS-CoV-2 can be present in feces, what are possible transmission routes? Let's consider four possible routes for the virus to be transmitted via our poop. First, let's consider the most basic fecal-oral transmission route. In scenario number one, after you go number two, you don't wash your hands and then you eat something. A second possibility is the ingestion of contaminated waters. So, untreated waste makes its way to surface water and that water is ingested accidentally or is consumed without proper treatment. The good news is that virus RNA detected in wastewater and receiving waters has not yet been shown to be infectious. A study, such as this one in Italy, sampled raw and treated wastewater, as well as the rivers that received the wastewater. They detected the presence of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in wastewater and in the receiving rivers. However, the results suggested that pathogeneity of the virus in these wastewaters and surface waters could be null. But the risk may be greater in the least developed countries. Low-income regions often lack wastewater sanitation with partial to no sewer systems. Over half a billion people still practice open defecation, while another 3.5 billion people use unsafe sanitation. 
these circumstances may facilitate transmission of viral diseases via the incidental fecal-oral route. A third possibility is the fecal-oral foodborne route. Untreated irrigation water, possibly using so-called gray water, could leave viruses on food, such as lettuce. But things get really interesting when we consider the fourth possibility, fecal aerosolization. That's right, little bits of poop being turned into aerosols, then either getting inhaled or landing on a surface, resulting in fomite transfer. Before you think this is ridiculous, fecal aerosolization was key to spreading SARS in 2003. Dr. Liu, a 64-year-old doctor, checked into the ninth floor of Metropole Hotel in Hong Kong. He was feeling ill and spent the evening on the toilet. Without meeting others, it's believed his aerosolized fecal matter infected 16 other guests in the hotel, all on the ninth floor. Those guests then seeded outbreaks in nine other countries across the world, with most of the 8,000 known cases of SARS being linked back to this event. As for the novel coronavirus, a study in Guangzhou, China, seems to have found evidence of infection by fecal aerosols. Two others in Hong Kong also reported it. The study in Guangzhou reported two families, one living on the 25th floor and the other on the 27th floor, that seemed to have been infected by a family living on the 15th floor directly below them despite a period of lockdown. A vertical ventilation pipe was the culprit. The bioaerosolization of wastewater mixed with urine, feces, and exhaled mucus originating from index patients is suggested to be the source of infectious aerosols in this outbreak. The bioaerosols were generated during toilet flushing and then spread via the drainage stacks and vents with minimum dilution. Thus, the concentration of virus in drainage pipes can remain very high even after the virus travels a long distance. These bioaerosols might be inhaled directly by a bathroom's occupant or be deposited on room surfaces which might later be touched by occupants. The good news is that these fecal transmission modes are likely to be secondary to the primary mode of respiratory transmission. The story doesn't end there. Viral RNA in our poop is actually a good thing. Here's why. Researchers across the world are sifting through your poop and finding valuable information. Sampling wastewater gives you a real-time snapshot of the prevalence in the entire community in just one sample. An increasing trend in viral RNA is a warning sign of spreading infections. A study in Sweden could identify spikes in the wastewater's viral loads that corresponded with peaks in hospitalizations about four weeks later. In an even more interesting application, wastewater samples that were routinely being collected for surveillance were analyzed retroactively. When they went back and looked at these samples in Italy, they were able to show that COVID-19 was already spreading there in December 2019. The first SARS-CoV-2 positive sewage samples were collected as early as the 18th of December 2019 in Milan and Turin, two months before February 21st, which is when the first case was reported in Italy. Now this story was especially interesting to me since I've done monitoring and sampling of combined stormwater and sewer pipes. So as promised, here I am installing a transducer below the street level in Thailand back in 2014. And here I am collecting some of the dirty water. So next time you flush your toilet, remember, you're not just going to the bathroom, you're helping science. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and be sure to check out some other videos here and here.